I think he's checking something. Okay. Okay. I think there's a heartbeat there. Is there a heartbeat? Yeah, I think there is. Yep. Okay. I got some week five, the Fab Five pickups. And, uh, you know, we talked about a few of these guys earlier because they were just that damn good and they're available in a bunch of different leagues. So, how uh, what, that, yeah, you like that little prop. Uh, so, <laughs> so, my rule of, of thumb, because, I, well, Eli, where's Tyler Boyd? Where's some of the other? Yeah, I agree. Tyler Boyd is rostered on 37% of Yahoo teams. I keep it under 20%. And that was the rule. I mean, just to, for example, like CJ Stroud, last week I was going to talk about him. He jumped up to 21%. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to keep it, you know, keep, keep it 100 on here. And, uh, you know, CJ Stroud's up to 48% owned now. So, and next thing you know, next, the week after that, he blows up again, has another monster week. It'll be 65%. So he he's rising. Uh, Pook. Obviously, now is probably 100% rostered. It's you know incredible his rise. Um, so that could be Michael Wilson. Michael Wilson keeps putting up you know uh, 26, almost 27 point stat lines every week. Fantasy like he, he starts taking some of those targets away from Hollywood Brown, and you're gonna, you're gonna be seeing a lot of him. Get him now, four four percent rostered. That's why I have him as the number one pickup this week. Uh, get him get him now while he's cheap. And I I don't think I don't think this is a fluke. I think this is sustainable. Like going forward, because I don't see them maybe drafting somebody next year, but for the for the season wise, he's gonna be in the mix. He's gonna be either a top two or three receiver at worst for for the rest of the season, in my opinion. And I like the rapport that him and Josh Dobbs have together. Uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, me and Jamie just talked about. Then only five percent rostered. Now is the time to to jump on him. I know people have probably have some injuries. You could stash this guy away on your bench. He's gonna be getting uh, more looks. And, you know, if he doesn't start this week, he'll start in the next couple weeks. It's 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 inevitable. Uh, Josh Dobbs talked about him uh, there with Michael Wilson. Josh Dobbs still only 6% rostered. Uh, three of the four games, he's had at least 18 fantasy points. So, I mean, this guy, he's, he's putting up decent stat lines. I mean, you, if you want to give me, a, a, like, probably a top, I'd say he's probably a top 20, three fantasy court probably somewhere between 22 and 23 in terms of fantasy quarterbacks so far which ain't bad i mean especially for a backup that's a nice one week fill-in guy that's a nice you know two quarterback league as your second guy that's a nice dfs uh, you know option uh josh Dobbs has come to play and until kyler comes back yeah yeah i think he's got some value uh num number four and five were they were kind of late additions i was gonna go with a couple uh different guys i'm uh I had Greg Dolchidge from the Broncos. He's on. He's coming back from the IR, and I had him at five originally because I'm like, hey, go go get some Dolchidge now while he's cheap and he's only 13% rostered. Go and grab him, stash him, and then you could probably start him, you know, middle of the season, uh, give you give you a good tight end. But you know what? We went with a couple different uh, guys instead. Uh, Ronnie Rivers from the uh, Rams. If Kyron Williams is going to go down, they don't have Cam Akers anymore. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like there's uh, Zach Evans, not really a factor right now. So Rivers is the next man up. So if Kyron Williams, and he's questionable for week five, if Kyron Williams is not playing, Ronnie Rivers is probably going to get the start. And it's like I said, it's hard to find uh, productive running backs at this, at, you know, at this stage of the season. Now this isn't week one or two anymore. So Ronnie Rivers, 0% rostered. You can get him in any size league. And the same thing with Darnell Washington. He's the the stud young uh, uh, tight end that the Steelers drafted from Georgia. Um, you know, it was a was a beast for them for a couple of years. Uh, Fryermuth is out for at least week five, and you know, and that might turn, you never know. This stuff, some of this stuff lingers. It might turn into you know he's out because I, th I think the Steelers have a buy they have a buy week six. So the next time you might see Pat Fryermuth is week seven. So you know why not? Uh, take a take a flyer on Darnell Washington if you need a tight end. If you have an empty roster spot, or you, or you can IR somebody. Uh, I, I I like I liked him. I, I don't know if you remember a lot of him at, at Georgia, but you know he was a, he was a damn good tight end. And and this was the greatest tight end draft in in the history of the league, in my opinion. So just because he you know he hasn't been mentioned as much as Laporta or Kincaid or Musgrave from the Packers doesn't mean that this kid kid can't play too. I think he's a nice backup to Fryermuth. I know the Steelers' offense is junk. But you know, maybe maybe he can surprise some people. But these are my uh, Fab Five of the week. Bye. Yeah, I was actually since because we were actually talking about um, Rivers, 
in our uh, divisional preview. And I was actually going to try to find that just for a moment because we actually did talk about Rivers in um, this uh, and the Rams and the running back situations. And so, yeah, I, I think we I think I had some projections up there. I think it, he was I, he is a rookie this year. I don't remember where he came from, but I, I just know he was a rookie. And we were just kind of we were just kind of I think we were kind of skeptical on where he would fit into this scheme and whatnot, more than likely. Were they? No, I damn it. I'm trying to remember. I, I remember him from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we 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 actually broke this down because that's when I did all I did all those cool little. Yeah, I remember uh, you. Graphics. Yeah, I remember you I had, we had him. I'm trying to remember what school he went to. Yeah, I don't remember. Was oh, Fresno, you? Fresno State, Fresno okay. State. Yeah, because I know we talked about him. So yeah, I I couldn't remember offhand myself either. Yeah, which is crazy, crazy, so, crazy. So, I mean, so he's a California kid, you know, Fresno State. So McVeigh probably heard about him a few years ago. So McVeigh's probably known about him. Uh, obviously, they have a they have a nice young, you know, between Evans, uh, Rivers, and and Kyron Williams. All all three backs are you know either first or second year backs. So they got some young running backs there, young Lions, and oh oh Big D oh Donovan cool. <laughs> Um, Mitch Trubisky that, can't throw more than five yards. That's a great suggestion. That's a great suggestion. Uh, it, well, it, it, oh, hey, Pickett, Pickett's only questionable. Now, now Pickett could throw it eight yards. Okay, Mitch is about five, and Pickett's about eight. So, and <laughs> and yeah, tight tight end. Hey, if Darnell Washington is the only guy Trubisky can hit, I, I mean, he did pretty. Hey, people knock Trubisky, but you know he he uh he had, he had a nice rapport with Cole Komet when he was in Chicago. So. Uh, that's anything's possible now jay's gonna talk about his yes um yes we are into Let's now we're out. into the <laughs> we're, we're we're into the sleeper six side of the side of the show now um this is for all the sleeper guys out there who are playing the sleeper um so we mentioned uh mclaughlin he's only two percent rostered over there um joshua dobbs i i think he can be Almost fantasy uh, irrelevant a little bit, I think. Um, he's got, you know, Eli just mentioned him. He's got, you know, at least average of 18 fantasy points, and he's maybe he can hit uh, Wilson here. I got to hit Wilson too as well. So Dobbs is slowly, slowly getting a little traction, especially with all the stuff that's actually going on too here, because you know with bye weeks going in, and you know, t you know, if, especially if you know Pickens is. Uh, hurt i mean you need somebody else to fill in especially in two quarterback leagues you know joshua dobbs you know he could be a feeling for that week till somebody else comes back but i mean yeah it's i probably wouldn't do if, if i really had to yes i i would probably i would i would take the risk and see what happens <coughs> um the lions defense they're playing the panthers this upcoming week they had five sacks two interceptions um they're they're actually they're in the last, yep. In the last uh, five or five, the last uh, two games here, they've been averaging about 280. Then been only given up about uh, 280 some odd yards. In the last uh, last four games, total of, of all four games here. Um, Michael Wilson only six percent rostered, um, and John U. Smith only two percent rostered. I know is. Is Jonu Smith the better option over um, Kyle Pitts right now? He, I, I'll, I'll let you get to Jameis Williams here in a second, but I was I was going to throw my hat in on on Jonu Smith. Um, he, I, Kyle Pitts, they just they don't know what to do with Arthur Smith. Doesn't know what to do with him. I mean, really, I, he, you don't you don't go from being like you know the fourth overall pick, having a great rookie year, being like an all pro level tight end to just being a scrub overnight. Like it's less than two years later. So, but right now of the two, uh, John o. Smith, it's all, you know, three of his four games in the first game, he didn't get any targets like game one. Other than that, he's had at least five targets in the three games. So he's getting targets had had 95 yards, you know, this past week. So uh, against Jacksonville. So yeah, yeah. John o. Smith, I think you could argue for as cheap as he is, two percent rostered in all these different you know leagues, and you get him in sleeper you, or um, 
uh, yeah, and sleeper, you can get him in Yahoo, pro, you know, ESPN, anywhere. I, I'd snag him up. I think he's the better play than Kyle Pitts right now. Now, come back to me in maybe week 12, but right now, John New <laughs> Smith is the better play. So week 12. How about like week six or seven? Because <laughs> I got I, I to have, have some margin for error here. You know, so I leave it, I leave it open. I leave it. It's, it's hard saying because, you know, John Smith, he, I know, he's been around for a while. I mean, he was with the, the Titans for a while. He, I mean, he was their, one of their better uh, tight ends down there. He, he actually went up to the Patriots for there for a little bit. Now he's down there with, you know, the Falcons. You know, he, he's, he's a little bit older. I mean, a little bit older um, tight end. I mean, he's been around for a while. I mean, yeah, if, they, if he can actually get the targets, it's sad to say, you know, that we're saying this over Kyle Pitts because everybody wants Kyle Pitts to actually be the guy down there. And it just seems like it's just not working out. Nothing's going on. It's it's sad to say that. If if they and they've got some young, nice offensive pieces. We both like Drake London. They, I, that's another guy they don't know what the hell to do with. So I, I think it's more of the play calling because Drake London's got, you know, top 20 fantasy receivers potential and they just they, they don't use him properly so Pitts, if i you know if i'm Pitts, i demand a trade i'm like look get me the hell out of here you don't know what you're doing like you're wasting me away you know his second contract's about to come up you know if you guys are gonna be a running team i mean i get it with algier and Bijan. if we're gonna be a, a power running team i get it but i'm not here to block like johnu smith does a little bit of both he blocks he catches he's kind of a w- more well-rounded veteran tight end uh yep. kyle pitts has one job Run, he's basically he's basically Atlanta's version of Kelsey. Run down, <laughs> fifteen yard post route, you know, right in yeah. the basket. That's what he does. He's a speed. Yeah, that's for sure. Maybe maybe the maybe he should go to uh, um, the Panthers. They need they need they need one down there. That might help them out. They want to trade him within division. Yeah, I mean, yeah, def- he'd be <laughs> definitely an upgrade over uh, Hayden Hurst. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then I. I got Jamison Williams. Yeah, he might be 53% rostered, but go out there and check your wave wires just in case he might be out there. I mean, yeah, he's a little bit rostered. You know, you just don't know. He, he might be out there in a few leagues. So go out there and snag him up if you're able to. I know in most of the leagues I'm in, he's well, well, probably taken, but there could be a slim chance that he's not, or a, there is a slim chance he could still be out there. So just make sure. Go out and snake him up. And then our my last final segment for this, my sleeper six top. This is for the deeper leagues. Deeper Ooh. leagues. Yes, deeper leagues this is. McLaughlin, we just mentioned him. He's out there. And I, I actually got two two Jets guys on here. I got Zach Wilson and Zach Wilson. Alex. Yes, it's it's <laughs> we're getting down to slim pickings. I was gonna probably leave Dobbs up here, but I'm like, eh. Um, Zach Wilson is, I kind of wanted to write this kid off because the first game I'm just like, this kid is trash. He didn't look great. I'm like, why? The what, trash you know, <laughs> yep. Every, everybody was hating on this guy. I mean, he is like, Hey, get this guy up out of here. I mean, this guy is a joke. Why, why, why are we playing this guy? You know, they wanted somebody else to come in, but he actually looked decent enough where if you really needed a quarterback in deeper leagues, I think he's starting to kind of come around. He looked like, I mean, he was taking, he actually was taking more accountability for his actions with that late. If I think honestly, with that late fumble, if he didn't, if he didn't lose that snap, I think the jets would have won that game. The jets were actually looking like the better, the better team. I mean, I, I, I was, I was, I was hoping for them to come back and actually take this game over with, Cause that would have been that like, that would have been the story, you know, Zach Wilson from being a dud to a stud. And, you know, at, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say this quick before you get to Lazard and some a few other guys uh, that now that this is something, if you guys want to, anybody watching, if you want to comment on this and if you have some, you know, you want to put your two cents in your hat, hat in the ring, uh, a unhealthy Derek Carr or Zach Wilson. I will take – I wouldn't have said this a couple weeks ago. I will take Zach Wilson over this version of Derek Carr any 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 week of the year going forward. Like Derek Carr right now, while he's banged up, is trash. He is absolute garbage. A um, few other guys, Desmond Ritter. I mean, right now, Zach Wilson going 
forward. Like if you're gonna get if you're gonna get Al Lazar involved in the offense, and Garrett Wilson's gonna do his oh. thing, Brees Hall don't do his thing. I, I I think yeah, I think Zach Wilson at least at least two guys off the top of my head. He's, he's a better play than he's a better play than Desmond Ritter from the Falcons, and he's a better play than, than until Derek Carr gets healthy. So Zach Wilson, if he's available, and if if in a lot of these, you know, especially sleeper, these dynasty leagues or these uh, really competitive, hyper competitive leagues, which some of you guys are probably involved in, like if you can get Zach Wilson on your bench, I, I I'd actually I do it. He looked, yeah, not every week is going to be two forty five and two touchdowns, you know, but Kansas City's got decent defense. I mean, he didn't he didn't tear up Denver. I mean, it's not like I mean he looked good, and and yeah, I, I just I thought I I thought I'd defend Zach Wilson for a change. He looked good. So let's don't, let's let's not talk about Raider because he's <sighs> I just, <Arbagio. laughs> just overall just Zach Wilson looked like he was actually having fun in this game. You know, he looked like himself a little bit more, the BYU kid that we wanted to see that they drafted him in the first place in the first round. He was and this this is what he should be doing. I mean, yeah, it's, I, I liked what I saw because, you know, Alan Lazard actually got a touchdown in there. He had like, I think he caught all of his targets. I think there was all three, either three or four. He caught all of his and a touchdown. Um, I mean, if it does come down to be it, I mean, if they're stopping Wilson, Lazard is the next best guy. And in, in, in this, in this offense, you know, Brees Hall had a nice few runs. I was happy about that. I mean, I seen Brees Hall. He had a nice few runs. So, Alan Lazard is out there. I just mentioned uh, Michael Wilson. He's five percent rostered out there, so he's still out there in quite a few leagues. Um, Terrence Marshall only five percent rostered. He's he's getting in. He's actually getting a little bit of work in still. I mean, Thielen might be their you know their other you know their number one right now, but I think Marshall is their number one guy. He's been there a lot longer. He knows his offense. I just think sooner or later Marshall is going to outbeat Thielen down the road. Um, well, especially with especially with Mingo still being you know banged up. So you know Jonathan Mingo is not taking targets away. DJ Chark is trash. So yeah, yeah, Terrence Marshall. That, that's a that that is a no pun intended sleeper pickup. <laughs> right. Um, and then we got Mitch Mitch Trubisky, zero percent rostered. Just. Just in case, you know, if you know Pickens can't play, Trubisky is the next guy in in hand to get playing time. So, yeah, these are these are my guys for deep sleepers that I kind of see in that are more reliable guys that I would probably pick up if I had to actually play these guys. So these are the guys that I looked at in at 16, 16 man sleeper. So. Oh, that sleeper. Well, 16-man league, my bad. So let me rephrase that there a little bit. Uh, 